to the channel and welcome back to another session. I am very excited to have you again. And today we want to look into Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26 to 27. But before we do that, let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. I thank you for these wonderful women. I thank you that they are distinguished. I thank you that you are doing a mighty work in their lives. I thank you that through this mentorship, Lord, you are revealing your glory and your grace, even through the sessions that they are learning and the wisdom that they are receiving and that is being imparted into them. Mighty God, I pray that today you do a new thing in their lives. As they listen to this word, Father, I pray that they have understanding and that your grace is multiplied in their lives. This we pray in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So we've looked a lot at the business side of this distinguished woman. We've looked at the husband. We've looked at her family life. We've sort of looked a lot at that and we sort of looked a lot at the big things, but we want to look into the small things today. There's a, there's a saying that one small step makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference. And these scriptures almost gives us insight into what that means. Because these are the hidden things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives. These are the small little things, small little ways of thinking, small words, small actions, small decisions and choices that make up the big frame that contribute to the big vision of our lives. Now the Bible here is telling us that this woman is opening her mouth with wisdom and it tells us that on her tongue is the law of kindness. She's opening her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Now we've looked that wisdom is something that truly comes from God. Wisdom is the how to do something, when to do it, why you should be doing it, and what to do. So there will come seasons in your life that will require you to open your mouth with wisdom. This wisdom reflects itself through the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It can reflect itself through patience. Sometimes what God is doing in your life is that he is helping you or causing you through pruning and through difficult seasons to learn how to be patient. And in that patience, he wants you to open your mouth with wisdom. Wisdom that reflects the patience even in a storm. Wisdom that reflects joy even through a storm. Wisdom that reflects happiness even when things are very loud and stormy. Wisdom that reflects peace even when there is no peace that is being reflected in your life. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Why does she open her mouth with wisdom? It's because there is something at stake. When you understand that this thing that I have, maybe your life, maybe your possessions, maybe your family, maybe your education, maybe your beauty, maybe your intelligence, maybe your experiences in life, maybe your career, maybe your job. There's something that God has given you that is so precious. And because it is precious, you treat it as something of value. And so you watch over it. You are guarding that thing. So this woman is opening her mouth with wisdom because she's guarding something in her life. There's something so precious that causes her to be a little bit more careful in what she says, a little bit more careful in how she handles things by her confession. Because when you are careless, you can lose something. Have you noticed that when we go to sleep at night, we lock our doors? Why do we do that? Because we are trying to apply wisdom with the possessions that God has given us. We don't go to sleep at night with our doors open. Whether you live in the countryside, whether you live in the city, everybody is locking their doors. There's a reason why you are doing that. And so in the same light, she's locking her door to foolishness by speaking words of wisdom. Those words of wisdom are like a door. They are like a lock. 
that stops foolishness from coming inside her life. Now, the Bible tells us that on her tongue is the law of kindness. Kindness is, is something that the dictionary uh, describes as being generous. It's being mindful. It's, it, it's being considerate. It's being friendly. So the law of generosity is on her tongue. And this generosity, it's more to do with her life. It's more to do with protecting what she has, protecting what she has worked for. You don't speak anyhow about your children. You don't speak anyhow about your life. You don't speak anyhow about yourself because you understand the value that you carry as a distinguished woman. And so you are careful about what you say about your life, your present and your future. Your past is gone, but your present and your future, you are mindful about what you say. You are considerate about what you say. You are generous in the words that you say. The reason why it tells us that is because the next verse tells us that she is watching over the ways of her household. Remember, with this woman, a lot of it has to do with her household. This doesn't mean that it's not relatable if you're not yet married. It's relatable because you have somewhere where you stay. You have a life. You have a calling. You have a purpose. A household is not just about a house and children and a husband. It's the managing of a household. It's the nurturing of a household. It's, it's beyond the building and the people is the character it's is it's the peace it's it's the substance it cannot be seen so the reason why this woman is opening her mouth with wisdom is because she's watching over the ways of her household and the household is not just the children and the the spouse it's also the servants in the house you might say, well, I don't have servants. I'm not that wealthy to have servants. But perhaps you are in a job and you are working with people. That means there's a level of communication. There's a level of some kind of training. You are working and communicating with different people every day. It means that you need to watch over those lines of communication. You need to watch over those relationships so that everything that you do is flourishing there's a saying that don't burn that bridge don't burn those bridges because one day you might need to cross back watching over the lines of communication in your business in your relationships in your friendships the household is beyond that there are friends that also come to that house but she is watching how with wisdom with the law of kindness. Women of God, how are you watching over the affairs of your house? Sometimes as women, we can go into a spiral of gossip, whereby friendships are based on gossip. You're on the phone for an hour speaking about other people's lives. You become close to people based on gossip. And, and God doesn't want us to be gossipers. God doesn't want us to have relationships based on communication about other people's lives. Watching over the affairs of a household. The affairs of your household also is to do with gossip. Making sure there's no gossip. Making sure that idle words are not coming out of your mouth because it will be traced back to you. They'll hear that, oh, so-and-so, do you know that so-and-so is always talking about other people? So-and-so is always doing this and that. It will always come back to you because what you do is a seed. Every word that you speak, every action that you make is a seed that will one day produce a harvest whether good or bad. She watches 
over the ways, the affairs of our household. The Bible, I'm reminded of Job. Job had a hedge of fire around his house to the point that Satan could see that Job has a hedge of fire. I cannot touch, I cannot steal, I cannot take anything from him because the guy is covered. Even the bowl of fruits in his kitchen is covered with a hedge. You can't steal. Things are not just going to rot. Things are not just going to break in his house. There's a level of being careful whereby things don't just break in your house. You have created a system in your house whereby people that come in your house they don't behave anyhow because of a law of kindness, because of wisdom that comes out of your mouth. People are not just going to come and break things in your house, breaking your plates and all these kind of things. It's because they understand that these things are precious. We can't just do things anyhow. We have to behave in this household. She opens her mouth with wisdom. The Lord wants us to begin to open our mouths with wisdom concerning every area of our lives. The Lord wants us to water every area of our lives with wisdom, to replenish and revive our lives simply by the words that we speak. He wants us to speak things that reflect His glory and His grace of our lives. To speak as those that live by faith and not by sight. It's easy to live by sight today. There's so many things that want to push us down. To see things in this physical realm. The physical realm is a mirage. It's not real. The spirit realm is so real. It's more real than your flesh. The spirit realm is the real truth. And the Lord wants you to live as one who is seated with him in the heavenly realms, above powers and principalities. Your language to mirror his throne. Your eyes to see according to his spirit. Your words to overflow like his word like these scriptures and these promises that he has spoken over, over your life, which are yes and amen. The Bible is telling us that she does not eat the bread of idleness. Idleness is basically a lack of movement. It's sluggishness. It's laziness. It's an inability to be fruitful, an inability to be productive. She doesn't eat the bread because this can be presented as something that is appetizing. Idleness can come in a platter. Idleness of your words, idleness in your way of thinking, idleness in your choices and decisions, idleness in your actions. You can actually look very busy in life. You can be busy doing all kinds of things, but it's all under the bracket of idleness when it's not productive. When it's not productive according to the will of God, it's idle. There are people who are busy, but they are idle because what they are doing is not in line with what God has said they should do. It's not in line with their purpose. It's not in line with their gifts, with their skills, their abilities, their talent. It's not in line with the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so they are very busy, but there's no productivity. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Remember how we spoke that it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit. This woman is not just planting vineyards for nothing. These are things that are inspired. These are things that are authentic to her purpose and her calling. Authentic to who she is. 
Who are you in Christ? Who are you, daughter of God? Who are you, woman of God? What does God say about you? What is he saying to you? She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. You know, it's so easy, especially now with all this uncertainty going on. It's so easy to start to put different caps. One day you're this, the next you're that, next year you're this, the year before you were that. Because you're looking for something. But the Lord is saying, I've created you to do this. Don't look at others and how they are creating so much. They are generating so much out of this. Be patient. Keep doing what I've called you to do. Keep making movement. Keep walking. Keep crawling. Start running. Stay in your lane. In your lane. You will not eat the bread of idleness. Idleness comes when you begin to look at what are other people doing. When you begin to step outside of the lane. When you begin to step outside of the vine. In the vine, in Christ, in the word, in prayer. This is where you become productive. This is where you get insight, clarity. In the prayer room. In the prayer closet, in the word, you begin to get direction. In a drought, you begin to be told to sow in a drought. It doesn't make sense, but you are obedient. Because this sowing is a supernatural thing. It's beyond the physical. For God will cause it to grow supernaturally. And he will cause you to get a harvest in the same year. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness because she's authentic. She's precious about what she has. Anything that you don't watch over, you will lose. People who didn't watch over their marriages, they lost the marriages eventually. They didn't watch over their children, they lost the children. They lost the relationships with the children. People that didn't watch over their jobs, they were working anyhow at work, doing things anyhow, speaking all kinds of things about their leaders. Eventually, they lost the job. Watch over the things that God has given you. She watches over the ways of her household. The ways, this is the walk, this is the talk. It's what you do and it's what you say. It's not just about what we do, it's also about what we say. And what we say is a reflection of how we think. She's watching over the ways of her household through wisdom. Wisdom. This is why she can open her mouth with wisdom. What you say is only a reflection of what you think. And the Bible tells us that we have the mind of Christ. Let us live as those who have that mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I'll be careful about what I say. I have the mind of Christ. I'll watch over everything that God has blessed me with. I will see that I'll see how I can multiply it. I'll see how I can increase the gifts and the talents that God has given me. I will not sit on my hands. I will not sit on my talent. I will not sit on my gift. I won't do things because this is the norm. This is what everybody else is doing. Perhaps God has called you not into a nine to five, but perhaps he wants you to employ people, but there's a process. And so you're looking at other people, but he has not called you into that lane because he has given you so many ideas. One idea at a time. Try one idea at a time. Take it easy. Saturate your ideas in prayer. And God will direct you. Start with this one. Start with idea 10. Don't do idea 5 yet. Because maybe idea 10 in two years will open a door to ideas 1 to 9. Just let the Lord lead you. 
I want to pray with you today. I believe it's a time of wisdom. We need wisdom. We want to ask God for wisdom. Not just for our lives, our future, our present, but for everything that we are doing and specifically for this season and this year, before the year closes, that the Spirit of God teaches us this law of kindness. It's something that He has to teach us. Something He has to teach you. You can't speak something that you've never been taught. So He will teach you what this law of kindness looks like, what it sounds like, authentically to you. He will help you to watch over the ways of your house and not to eat the bread of idleness. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you. I thank you for these distinguished women, mighty God. Father, I pray for wisdom. Grant them wisdom today. I thank you that every area that is lacking, you are pouring wisdom. Your wisdom, which is supernatural. Your wisdom, which is lavish. Your wisdom, which is glorious. Your wisdom, which is full of grace and peace. I thank you for pouring this wisdom. Father, I pray for, even for an overflow of this wisdom. Throughout this next few weeks and months, even to the close of the year, I thank you for this supernatural wisdom that will begin to flow like a river in the hearts of your, of your daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this wisdom will reflect in everything that they do and say. Father, I pray even that their environment begins to adjust to that wisdom that you are pouring today. In the name of Jesus, the name above all names, I thank you that by your spirit you will teach them. You will empower and help them to watch over the ways of their lives. To learn how to speak the law of kindness. And Father, not to eat the bread of idleness. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. And I thank you for the oil of gladness that you're putting in their hearts. Thank you for that oil of gladness that you're pouring into their lives. Every depression, let it go. Depression, leave. Anxiety, leave. In the name of Jesus, spirit of rejection, leave. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for the oil of gladness. I thank you that it will speak for your daughter. In Jesus' name, even as they go out, let they be a supernatural makeover, even as you did in the days of Lazarus. Father, when he came out of the tomb, Lazarus looked like a new man. Father, let it be for your daughters today. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I hear the Lord say that whatever that didn't work before, do it again. Try it again. It's going to work this time. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but something that didn't work before, God says, this is another chance. Give it another chance. It will work by His leading. God bless you. I will see you in the next session. Take care.